Christian Parenting. If you don't teach your children to honor you, no one else will. Join us today for this important conversation on Family Vision. Hi, my name is Ray Reno. Welcome to Family Vision with my parents, Dr. Rob and Amy Reno. Strengthening families through practical, encouraging, and real conversations. Rob Reno here with Visionary Family Ministries alongside my great wife, Amy. Great to be here again. We are coming up on 28 years together, and today we're continuing a conversation about honor. In this episode specifically, we're going to talk about teaching our children to honor us. Now, all of the Ten Commandments require teaching from parents. None of them are natural. Your children are not going to do any of these on their own. They need to be taught not to lie. They need to be taught not to steal. They need to be taught to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Now, in the Ten Commandments, eight are negative. They are thou shalt not. There's two that are positive. One is remember the Sabbath and this one, the fifth commandment, to honor your father and your mother. So today let's talk about how we can teach our kids to obey this commandment from God. Amy, you've used this phrase many times before. If you don't teach your kids to honor you, no one else will. Talk about that. Well, I just think as we have done so many speaking around the country and and looking into the eyes of a lot of parents, I think I see the same reaction in those parents as I kind of is it kind of came back to myself and my own parenting kind of feeling getting like hit in the forehead with this truth at one point, like, wow, like, I'm literally, you know, if I don't teach my kids to honor me, no one else is going to do it. Like, there's no person coming into their life that will take this up. And we talk a lot, right, in visionary parenting about delegating parenting, delegating things. And we live in a delegation culture where, There's kind of an assumption all the time that if you want your kids to learn baseball, you're going to get them a good coach. If you want them to learn music, you're going to get them a good teacher, need teachers with academics. So we we understand and we're we're not opposed that you need to have other people teaching your kids skills. But this one, there's no one to delegate it to. Absolutely no one. So you have to understand how important your role is in teaching. As parents, we have to understand this is one of our main missions, is teaching our children to honor us. And I think I didn't really grasp that till I was well into parenting, how just how important this is and how central it is to what we're doing in our own home mm-hmm. and how beneficial it is for all of us. For all of us, right. Right. But what about, okay, what about someone who says, even saying it this way, it comes across a little harsh. Teach your children to honor you. Isn't that sort of like self-aggrandizing or putting yourself yes. up on a pedestal or demanding this or that? How would you well, respond to that? Well, I think it feels that way. I think it very much feels that way because of the culture that we live in. We get in the absence of Fifth Commandment culture. If you just look at the media around you, for example, and you look at what your kids are exposed to, this is maybe just a very simple thing, but you see all these movies now where the children are calling their parents by the first name. Mm. That's a very common thing. And it's sort of this idea, and and that's like what the cool parents are doing. You know, if you're a cool parent, you're going to be totally cool with that, and you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're kind of a friend sort of approach that that's what wise parents are doing or something. You know, I mean, you see that message a lot. So that's why I think there's sort of this insidious sort of view now for many Christian parents that they do feel like it's they're being self-promoting by teaching by using these words like just using the words it's important for you to learn to honor me those are words that i would say aren't said very often in christian homes but need to be right. like think back to my growing up in a home where i had my dad was not a christian but my mom was a christian Now, we need to understand where we are generationally. And so my parents were on the cusp of the baby, you know, they were born in 1945. So they're just a little bit, they don't really consider themselves baby boomers because they were just under that. And this is when we go back to that culture picture. There was much greater sense of a Christian foundation in the sense of 
kids were trained in school to honor their parents. I mean, my mom went to a public school and was trained to honor her parents. Like, there would be lessons on that. Lessons in the Christian the, base was stronger. Yeah, the lessons in the books and reading. So there was some sense that this was understood and this was taught. That's the world that they grew up in. So, okay, so fast forward, they're raising us. My, my mom's a Christian. My dad is not a Christian, but we're going to church regularly, of course. And I'm sure there were several lessons I had on those things at church back then. I mean, a lot in Sunday school and... I'm confident even in, in youth group. But I don't think in my home, my parents never really directly said those words to me. Like, And I wasn't disciplined for not honoring them. Because especially as when we get into high school years, there's just a certain sense where parents accept a level of dishonor because we think we're supposed to, mm -hmm. you know, because that's, again, what culture says in adolescence. This is the time when... Kids are allowed to treat their parents disrespectfully. You've heard that phrase before. Like, my kids thought I was an idiot from the time they were 15 to whatever, right. 23, and then all of a sudden I emerged, you know, smart again. Like, that was just sort of accepted. Right. I remember, especially, you know, junior high and high school for me, I think I treated other adults with more honor and respect than I did my parents. I think specifically my best friend Josh across the street, I was over their house a lot for meals and things like that. And if Mrs. LaMare, sir, gave, brought me a drink, I would say, oh, thank you very much. Or, you know, could you please pass this? Like I was polite and respectful and honoring yeah. or talking to them about their day, you know, taking interest yes. in them, like treating them with respect and thinking back, like, I don't think I spoke the same way with the same tone, uh, with the same level of, of kind of heart attitude of honor. So here I am, and I really appreciate the Lemaires. I think it's good to honor them and treat them with respect. But mom and dad deserved more, not less, right. than I gave to teachers or coaches right. or neighbors. You're opening a whole can of worms for me with just that one story. I'm like, my brain is firing with about 10 things to say. But starting with the idea of the that more issue, I can remember an when we started homeschooling our first, you know, R.W. was a pretty compliant first kid and wanted to please me. And that worked really well when you're homeschooling. And then Lissy came along much more strong-willed, not a lot of desire to to please and wanting to kind of do things her way. And I was really ready to give up. And when I called the woman who was mentoring me and I said, you know, this is not going to work. I have to put her in school. I mean, I can't teach her anything. She doesn't want to listen to anything I say. And she just said, well... Amy, you could do that, but you're still going to have a heart problem. And I was like, well, what do you mean? She said, well, the fifth commandment doesn't say honor your teacher. Mm. It says honor your mother. So she would just, you know, mother is on top, you know, honor your father and mother on top, teacher's underneath that, and coach is underneath that, and your friend's parents underneath mm -hmm. that. Yet every parent's had that experience that you've had how many times have we had the phone call where, oh, my goodness, your kids were just over here. They were the absolute sweetest things ever. You know, they were so, you know, offered to clean all their dishes right. and saying, right. you know, thank you. And they just, like, you've just trained kid? them so well. And then, you know, you're having those kids over at your house and you're just like biting your tongue, like wanting your kids to step up. And, you know, you feel like everybody feels like their other kids are behaving better in your home. Because we're all getting those social brownie points when we put on those skills in those other settings. It's self-serving. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting praise for that. And not that those aren't good habits. They are good habits. But we need to be honest that there's kind of a selfish core operating there where right. true honor happening in your home is coming from a much different place when you're working on this this trait of teaching your kids to honor you. You want them to honor you because this is what God commands. You want them to honor you because you want them to be grateful for all that you're blessing them with. And I go back to, again, our own relationship with God. God wants us to honor us because, honor him, I'm sorry, honor him because of all the care that he does to put into our lives and takes care of us. A, a holy God is justified in wanting our honor. And it's for our best. It's for our too. best. Yeah. Like yeah if we, we honor and if we yet. honor and worship him, that is the path to us to being happy, fulfilled, joyful, living Reason. in heaven forever. 
so, receiving those blessings yeah. that he that are for that that he will give to those who who honor him and we kind of disconnect that easily but as right. parents we understand you know I go back to honor and gratitude kind of go hand in hand you know like as a parent when our kids are honoring and grateful you desire to bless them more and if you have a kid that's dishonoring and not grateful how motivated are you to <laughs> not vary. cannot vary exactly one of the maybe practical parenting things here, and, and this is maybe just more of a helpful uh, approach, but whenever possible, and I understand, I mean, my parents got divorced when I was in high school, so not every situation is a two-parent family, all right? Um, but if you have a mom and a dad uh, on the scene, it can be really helpful if, the, if there's disrespect or dishonor toward a mom, for instance, it can be really helpful if the dad is the one who inserts himself to do the parenting and the discipleship in that situation. So uh, with the daughter who's being snippy with the mom, um, hey, Susie, whatever your name is, we need to go in the other room and talk about this. And then having a direct conversation with her that it's inappropriate for you to use that tone of voice with your mom. I understand that you're upset, but that doesn't give you the right to speak to her that way or vice versa. If the uh, son is being rude to the dad for the mom to be able to say, son, we need to go talk about this. It can help if you work as a team. Now, that doesn't mean that if you're the parent who's being disrespected or dishonored, that you somehow don't have the right to insert yourself and to confront that dishonor or disrespect. You absolutely can. Uh, but if you are in a situation where you can work or a grandparent, if a grandparent observes this and can address it in an appropriate way, uh, that can really be helpful for the child. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I feel like this is a, it's a topic close to my heart in the sense that going back to even my own growing up and understanding that there was a lot of conversations, a lot of things happening in my high school years, especially where I know I was not honoring to my parents, both in my direct communications with them at time, but more often not, than not just in my conversations with my friends. You know what I mean? Things when you know it's very easy to get into conversations with your friends and be negative about your parents sure. and talk about, you know, all the things that they're doing they're bothering that are bothering you. That's just kind of typical. And the thing that I that I didn't realize back then that I is so clear to me now, there's a scripture verse that says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. A man will reap what he sows. And that when we sow seeds of dishonor, and we're breaking that commandment in whatever form, we will reap from that. And it's just interesting because as, as I've dealt with this with my high school kids and we've dealt with that in our family, I'm always going back to the fact that learning this now in these hard years when you're an adolescent and learning to honor me, I'll say things like, when you learn to honor me, even when you disagree with me, when you learn to honor me, right, you know, e when you, you know, like, I want you to know that you're planting such good seeds for yourself. We go back to that thing you said, is teaching your kids to honor you self-aggrandizing? It feels like that, but the opposite is true. Teaching your kids to honor you is actually teaching your kids to plant beautiful things in their garden. It's teaching them to plant a greater fruit you know, that they can reap when they have learned at a young age to honor their parents. And right. we just have this practice where um, when our kids are seniors, they get to go on a senior trip with the local Christian school that they go to. And one of these things is we as parents, we get to write them a letter. And a lot of these uh, letters, of course, you do a lot of, you know, reflecting on who they were as kids. And I wrote in my daughter, Talini, a lot of those things but I had a whole section in there on honor because to me, it's so pivotal to me that the things that I did in my high school relationships with my parents reaped a lot of painful things for me in my 20s that took a lot more spiritual healing to get over for me to go back and learning how to really honor them in a heart way, not just a mouth way. I said before in our last podcast that, you know, when we speak words of honor with our mouth, that is a good thing. But we're going to be able to train our mouth a lot sooner than we'll train what's coming out of our heart. Mm -hmm. And so we want our kids to know that it's this heart honor 
that God is looking for in his children, both towards him and in our relationships with our with our parents. And I know that when we train our kids to honor us when they're young, it's going to help them. They're, they're going to reap a lot of benefits as they get older right. from that early training. Well, you are so right to talk about this as a, a commandment that has a ripple effect forward. Um, this is a unique commandment. The apostle Paul says it's the first commandment with a promise. Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And we know that this is not a promise of individual long life. If you honor your parents, you will live 70, 80, uh, 90 years. No Christian would ever think that if a child passed away of an accident or injury, no Christian ever says, well, they didn't honor their parents then because the Bible says you live Mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. So um, the key to unlocking this this promise is to understand that the Ten Commandments, and we find this in the, the preamble of the Ten Commandments and the postamble of the Ten Commandments, that the Ten Commandments are not just given to individual people, but they're given to the faith community. And so much of our ministry is about this concept of multi-generational faithfulness. And so the promise is this. The promise is that if moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas will follow God, and their children and their grandchildren will honor them in the most important way of all, which is by receiving the faith, by following in their footsteps of faith, then the promise is that the people of God, the faith community, or in New Testament terms, the church of Jesus Christ, will live long in the land. It's actually a promise from God that if children, if parents will be faithful and children will honor those faithful parents, then the faith community will live long in that land. And that's why the enemy puts so much firepower against the honoring of children to their parents, against the passing of the faith from one generation to the next. We want to invite you to join us for our Visionary Family Weekend Away coming up November 11 through 13, 2022, up in Wisconsin Dells at the Kalahari Resort. This is going to be an amazing, we believe, life changing retreat for families. We'd love to have you there. Get all the information at visionaryfam.com slash retreat. That's visionaryfam.com slash retreat. And you can always contact us with questions, with comments, with prayer needs at podcast at visionaryfam.com. That's podcast at visionaryfam.com. And we're already looking forward to the next time we get to spend with you on Family Vision. Family Vision.